Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and I know that some of you guys have been waiting for this feature to appear in Game Maker for literal years at this point. And it's finally here, let's talk about video playback. So if you've been following the, uh, the Game Maker beta update notes, uh, you may have seen this. Uh, video playback has been added to the Windows target. Uh, video playback has actually been sort of floating in and out of recent betas for about the last month or so. Um, but at, at first it was it was a little on the buggy side and I didn't want to make a video on it then and then for a few weeks it just disappeared completely as it was being worked on and now it's slowly being re-added again as it's ready. Um, originally it was uh, it was added on uh, PS4, Android, and Apple uh, because those just happened to be ready first. I don't believe there's any particular um, order in which these are these are being uh, added to Game Maker and now it's been added to Windows. Now it's been enabled for Windows. So you're going to need uh, Game Maker Beta 2022-300-047 for this. Um, I would say that by the stable version 2022.3, this would be out for Windows in full, but I have a feeling that it's going to stay in beta until it's ready on all platforms. And since the, like, the next Game Maker stable version is likely to be out in like a week, I don't know if it's going to be ready in time for that. So um, let's say Game Maker version 2022.4, the April release. Uh, expect to see this hit stable. So let's start playing around with this. Uh, if you install the uh, the appropriate version of Game Maker and open up a test project, uh, you're going to want to do a few things. One is going to be to go to open the project in Explorer and go into the included files and you're going to want to manually add you're going to want to manually add your video file here. Uh, I'm going to just add this one Cynthia Prelude.mp4. This is a, a, a brief clip of uh, Cynthia from Pokemon Brilliant Diamond preparing to just utterly annihilate my team. And uh, that's it. You have to add uh, videos as included files. There is no like video asset type in Game Maker. Uh, you can't you can't create a video resource or anything if you try to drag something if you try to drag a video file into the IDE it'll just ask you if you want to add it to the included files anyway. Um, a note on the video formats, uh, the way that Game Maker is implementing video playback is it's piggybacking off of the, uh, the device that you're using's, like, native media, like, control systems. Uh, this means that different formats and different, uh, codecs will work on different platforms, but as a general rule, it seems, so far at least, that, uh, an MP4 encoded with H.264 should work on just about anything. Um, certain operating systems or certain target device architectures may support different things out of the box. If the user has installed additional video codecs on their device, you might get more support. But um, as a general rule, MP4 container format with the H.264 codec should work on just about anything. Uh, obviously, you're probably going to want to uh, uh, do a little bit of testing on your target device of choice with any given video file before you, uh, before you ship it, but that should go without saying. Something that I have not investigated myself, uh, because literally nobody has reason to use the Microsoft AVI video format anymore, is whether or not AVI is supported, at least on Windows. I imagine it would be. Uh, way back in like the Game Maker 7, Game Maker 8 days, uh, I believe Game Maker supported playing like AVI videos natively, but uh, that was killed off in studio and has not, has not returned until approximately today morning, so... If anybody is actually curious enough to test that, let me know. Uh, there's, again, no reason anybody should use AVI in this day and age, but there you have it. So let me create an empty object. Let me go and drop that into the room. And I'm going to start writing code. Let's say video open. And this is going to take the name of the uh, the video file. Uh, Cynthia prelude.mp4. So this function on its own won't do anything. Uh, it won't return any value. It won't return like an index of a video data type or anything like that, the way that some of the other uh, file IO functions do. Uh, you can only have uh, one video open at a time. That is by design. Yo-Yo Games has no intention of changing that. This is just going to prepare a video file for playback later. So if we go into the draw event, so here in the draw event, we can say video underscore draw, and this will prepare the video for being, for being drawn. Uh, this won't actually draw anything itself. Uh, video draw takes no parameters. It simply acts upon whatever the currently open video file is, and it will return an array of a few values. So we can one, we can save the uh, the results of this to a variable, and then we can uh, we can do some things with those results. Uh, again, on its own, this won't do anything. You'll hear music playing in the background, the audio of the uh, of the video file, but uh, video draw won't on its own draw anything. 
So results, as I said, is going to be an array of a few values. Uh, the first value is going to be a status code of sorts. Um, it's just going to be results index zero is going to be equal to zero if the video is playing fine, and negative one if anything bad has happened at all, if the video is not playing for whatever, for whatever reason. So whether that's because it failed to load because the file that you tried to open doesn't exist, or if the file that you tried to open um, is uses a, a video codec that is not supported by your target device, or if the file that you tried to open is actually like an Excel spreadsheet or something that is that, that, that can't be decoded for obvious reasons, uh, then this is going to be equal to negative one. Uh, you probably want to check if results index zero is equal, equal to zero before you do anything else. Uh, and by doing anything else, I mean draw surface uh, results index one. So results index one, so the second value in this array is going to be a, um, a surface as implied by line four right here. And it's going to, uh, generally it's going to contain just the decoded color information of each frame of the video. Um, if I were to, if I were to just draw that at position zero, zero on the screen, we're going to be seeing the video playing on, um, in the corner right here as intended. And that's fine. So the video is going to play, uh, Cynthia is going to stare at us imposingly and she's going to prepare to like make us have a very bad time in combat. However, if you're developing on console, uh, what you're going to find in results index one is going to be a little different. It's still going to be a surface that you can draw with the draw surface function, but it's just going to be the black and white information of each video frame and uh, results index two in that case, which is just going to be no value on, on windows. It's just going to be like negative one or something. Uh, results index two is going to be the actual color information of the decoded video frame. So you have the black and white and the color. Uh, I believe the format that it is decoded to on console will be YUV, and you can combine those with a shader, which I made a video on, at least partially, a, uh, a number of months ago, if you're interested in. Although I believe it's implied that uh, if you're developing for console, GameMaker will, will like supply you a YUV shader automatically that you can use. Anyway. Uh, just something to be aware of. On desktop, this should be fine. Uh, on HTML5, I did not test this before I started um, recording this video. I just thought of this now. And also, for that matter, uh, Opera GX. I guess if it said it was supported on, on HTML5, it would have said so in the, uh, in the release notes. Hopefully someday it will be. Anyway, um, if you were to go type video underscore hit control space, uh, you would see a number of other functions related to video playback. A lot of these are self-explanatory. I feel like uh, video gets like volume, for example, should be pretty self-explanatory as to what that does. Uh, video pause, video resume should be pretty self-explanatory as to what that does. Uh, video set volume. I don't want to spend a lot of time going into, for example, video enable loop because I feel like anybody who's like, done anything with video media in the past should have a pretty good idea of what video enable loop does. Uh, some of the trickier ones, uh, video get status. And there's a part of me that thinks that Yo-Yo Games was originally going to just implement video get status as like the first index in the results array, the, uh, the results of video draw, because it has a lot in common with it. Uh, you may have noticed video status, there's a few constants, uh, video status close, video status pause, video status playing, video status preparing, um, which are, which are to like indicate the status of a video that's, that's been opened. So you can use this to check if a video file stream has been closed for playback. You can use it to check if it's currently playing, um, correctly as intended. You can use it to check if there's, um, if the video has been paused or anything like that. Uh, preparing is a bit of a special thing if you're opening a, a huge video file and you want to, uh, and maybe it takes a few seconds to load and you want to, to know that the video is responding, but it's not like finished yet. You might use video status, you might use video status preparing. Hey. Actually, you know, maybe I will demonstrate this. Uh, let's say if video get status equals equals video status uh, playing, we could draw some text on the screen at like 32... Uh, 640 like that and then if you hit the uh, keyboard check press VK space uh, video pause and then if the video status is video status paused 
could draw that on the screen and then video resume. And, oh no, that's HTML5. Don't run that on HTML5. That would be, that would be not great. And then um, we, we basically got ourselves a rudimentary, uh, rudimentary like video, video playback, like application, like a, a room, like mini VLC or something. Uh, you may have also noticed that one, it pauses when I hit the space bar, resumes when I, when I unhit the space bar. Uh, there's a little bit of motion blur in here. Uh, you may have also noticed that um, for a, a few frames at the very beginning, uh, there was no text being drawn at all, and that was because it uh, it takes a few um, it took a few frames for the video to be uh, to be fully loaded and ready for playback. I don't know if you try to load a large enough video into Game Maker that takes a, a longer time to load. Uh, I don't know if you'll if you'll find yourself with like desynced audio and video. I hope not. That would be like a problem. Anyway, what else is there that I want to to demo? Uh, video. Uh, video get format, I believe. Where was it? video? Video get format, I believe, is uh, is also a slightly important thing to to some people. Um, if you're working with cross-platform game development and you you might be working with, for example, making a game on desktop and also on console, uh, you may want to use the video get format function to check the format of uh, what a video is decoded to. So if uh, video get format equals equals video format uh, RGB, which is what we're going to be seeing here. Uh, you might want to draw, you might want to just draw the surface one way, draw the surface normally, and let's draw some text. Um, video video format RGBA. Uh, otherwise, else if video format is going to equal video format YUV, uh, you could draw on the on the screen instead video color format YUV, and in that case you would have to do a little bit uh, a little bit more with the shaders and the um, uh, the the texture samplers in order to uh, to render the video correctly. So that's a uh, that's a that's a reasonably easy way to figure out how you need to uh, how you need to draw the video. Let's see anything else video. Video get position, video get duration. Uh, those two are related to each other. Uh, video get duration and video like get position and also video was it video seek to video seek to these functions supposedly uh, like return and accept values that are in milliseconds but for some reason I feel like it's actually like instead of instead of returning the time in milliseconds and I'll see you right now. Uh, for some reason, I feel like at the current moment, it's actually returning in ten thousandth of a second. Uh, let's floor that value, round it down to make it a little bit easier to read. Like that. And I, uh, I don't know if I'm just going insane. All right, let's uh, draw that on the, on the next on the next line down. I don't know if that's just me like losing my mind or if there's actually a bug in Game Maker which causes, yeah, it definitely looks like these values divided by a thousand which should be converting milliseconds to seconds. It definitely looks like we're, uh, we're looking at tenths of a second here. Uh, video seek to uh, the function to just go to an arbitrary point in the video also, same deal. Um, anyway, I'm not wanting to report that to Game Maker. I don't know if it already has been or not. All right, so the video uh, the video's ended, and it's gone back to position zero, and it's not playing anymore. If you if you enable the loop, obviously it would start playing again. Anyway, video playback that's fun. So the fact that Game Maker will just decode a video to a surface uh, has a few implications. One, uh, you actually do not need to to free the surface automatically. Uh, manually rather when you're done with it. Uh, you don't need to say surface free results index one at the end or anything like that. Uh, Game Maker will actually just manage the surface for you. As far as I as far as I know, I have not encountered any memory leaks with regards to it or not. Uh, if I do try to free the surface, will it uh will it work? It should still work. It'll just it might have to reallocate it every frame, which might not be quite as efficient. Um if you want to, uh, if you want to create a freeze frame by doing a surface copy, 
um, to another surface, you should be able to do that as well. Uh, the fact that you draw the surface using just the draw surface function means a few things as well. One, you can use any old shader you want to draw the surface, um, YUV or otherwise. Uh, you could uh, you could do fun things like apply a. Um, uh, you should be able to use the game maker uh, room filter effects uh, as long as the uh, as long as the filter effect is applied to the layer that the object that's drawing the video is on. Uh, so that's potentially interesting. If I were to, uh, let's say, edge detect on on this video layer, uh, this should yeah, this is gonna this is gonna give us a nice uh, little uh, fun fun edge detection effect. Uh, there's also, for example, uh, some of these are new. Some of these have been added recently, and I don't know what exactly they do. Let's pixelate the video. Woohoo! That that's that's all of like 64p right there. All right, I'm gonna get rid of that. Uh, you could also draw this with your own shader to implement your own your own effects like that if you wanted to. Uh, you could use this surface as a texture in 3D if you want, which I know that some of you are gonna have fun with, uh, making your own like TV screens or whatever. Practical practical implementation for this in games might be another story entirely. I don't know if it's time for me to like start making Sony Vegas video editing tutorials or something like that. Um, does Blender still have a video editor included? Um, if you want to use Cynthia Prelude.mp4 as like a standard test of sorts to, to see if it'll work on, on different devices, uh, go for it. Uh, like I said, uh, MP4 encoded with H.264 should work on as many targets as possible, but uh, but do, uh, do do some testing. Um, let's see, I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, look for links to that in all of the usual places. You can see some fun things like your name in the credits or hear a shout out of yourself at the end of every video. And if you wanted to pledge, I would definitely appreciate it. Otherwise, I try to post about two game dev videos a week-ish. Uh, one tutorial, tutorial and one let's make a game, which is currently a, uh, a bullet hell. I hope you all found this useful and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Then Nothing Happened, Square Crow, Syndra Larson, Posho, Gunnar Clovis, Game Maker, Emily Coyo, Edward Hult, DJ Gibbles and RMB Umbrester for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end like this, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.